Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. How rare was last week's 11.5% decline in the S&P 500? Well, by some measures, it should only happen once every 125 years to every 14,000 years. Gee, that doesn't make sense, does it? We're going to dive into the math right now. First, take a look at my chart. I've got the S&P 500 uh, showing the waterfall cascade that uh, all bears were uh, jumping for joy about with their puts uh, exploding by 10,000% those tiny, teeny puts they bought. Uh, I tried to be short a lot as the market, you know, was, the market was way overextended. I'm not, and I'm saying overvalued, but uh, the, the triple Qs were 8% above their 50-day moving average. Uh, but, it, you know, it didn't work. Look at, here's, uh, here's late January, coronavirus fears. We hiccup a little bit, and then the market takes off to new highs again. Uh, I was picking stocks, stopped, gave up being short, and just raised a lot of cash. We had like 40% cash going into this. So we were buyers all last week down here, which was, you know, or through this. So this is uh, from, from here about 33.50 down to 28.50 is 14.5% drawdown intraday. It was 11.5% on the week. Um, and, you know, there you go. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at I'm, I'm asking how many sigmas was this move, and sigmas is just sigma is just standard deviation. So we're going to look at how we use the VIX to reverse engineer how many sigmas this was on a weekly basis. So uh, I made a little. Uh, well, let me show, first of all show you. I I went through this for my Taser uh, subscribers um, last Friday on 228. Uh, here we were buyers that day. We bought the lows in the NASDAQ 100. We bought the triple leveraged QQQs, the T triple Qs, uh, but at 70. And we were buyers all that week. So to do this, how many sigmas or standard deviations was this one week move? We're going to run through a little math experiment. So uh, I made a little PowerPoint for you. So let's see how this works out. So first, we have to know that the VIX is annualized standard deviation. A VIX of 20 means that the S&P 500 index will be within 20% higher or lower one year from now with a 68% probability. Here's another key fact. Obviously, you'll have this, uh, this video as your reference if you ever forget. Volatility is proportional to the square root of time. Okay, so that's our... Uh, that's our key math metric that we're going to use to turn the, the VIX, which is annualized de standard deviation, we're going to convert it to a weekly volatility. And that'll tell us, okay, what should we expect from the market on a weekly basis? And then we can plug that into what actually happened, and it'll tell us how many sigmas. And then we'll look at how rare. Okay, so next up. Uh, here's the key math now. S&P declined 11.5%, uh, close to close from Friday to Friday as the, VIX, as the VIX spiked above 40. A VIX of 40 converts to a weekly volatility of 5.7%. That math is 40 divided by the square root of time because volatility is proportional to the square root of time. So 40, a VIX of 40 divided by uh, the square root of 50 weeks, roughly 50 trading weeks, um, and that's about 7. So 40 divided by 7 is 5.7. So that's your weekly volatility, 5.7%. Um, if, you know, if you missed that at all or I was talking too fast or mumbled, just go back to the slide and just read through it slowly, and you'll, you'll put the pieces together. We're converting to a weekly volatility. Now we have a weekly volatility based on a VIX of 40, of 5.7%. So let's plug that into the actual moves that happen and see how many sigmas we get. So at an 11.5% move in the S&P in one week versus what we should expect, the standard deviation of 5.7%, that was a two sigma move, two standard deviation move. At 14.5, it was two and a half sigmas. All right. So now we're looking at our key math part two. This is slide three, last slide. Um, now, here, here's where I gotta I gotta stop for a second. So, we just did that first math to get a weekly volatility of five and a five point seven percent, 
based on the VIX at 40. Is the VIX at 40 normal? No, of course not. Uh, it's not where the VIX lives. Uh, if you looked at uh, a good way to see, well, where does the VIX spend most of its time? Uh, around 16. Uh, the the 50-week moving average is, you know, 15.9, and the 50-day moving average is, is lower than that. Uh, and so the VIX spends most, most of its time closer to 16 than to 25 or especially 40. So the, the VIX at 40 is not normal. Now let's look at a more normal volatility. I'm dialing this down to uh, using a base of 20 for the VIX and converting that to a weekly standard deviation or sigma. So VIX of 20 converts to a weekly volatility of 2.85%. That's 20 divided by the square root of 50 weeks, 2.85. So uh, the weekly move we had, 11.5%, divided by our new weekly volatility of uh, 285. That's a four sigma move. If we do it on the intraday drawdown of 14.5%, that's a five sigma move. Okay, so. How often should these things happen? Go back to, uh, so I ran through the math there. Uh, then I did it again for my, uh, my Healthcare Innovator subscribers on Sunday, and, uh, and I gave them the rarity of the moves. So here, here's the key paragraph. According to general stat principles, a four sigma event is to be expected about every 31,560 days, or about one trading day in 126 years. And a five sigma event is to be expected every 3.4 million days, or about one day every 13,932 years. So that's how rare a four or five sigma event is in markets. Doesn't seem to make sense, right? Because big sigma moves happen much more frequently. I mean, how many have you had in your life? Um, during the financial crisis, we had a VIX at 80 with 5% daily moves. So, and we've had, you know, we've had, we've seen the VIX above 20 and up to 40 uh, several times since then. So, what's going on here? Why don't, uh, why doesn't the rarity of standard deviation as a tool apply to volatility in financial markets? Well, that was the lesson of Nassim Taleb in The Black Swan and Benoit Mandelbrot in his, uh, his work and one of his books I'll show you here, uh, The Misbehavior of Markets. Here's Benoit Mandelbrot. Uh, he, he was the guy who invented, basically invented fractal math or is, uh, you know, developed it more than anyone. And here's the book I read, The Misbehavior of Markets, which Taleb gives full credit to Mandelbrot for observing that standard deviation did not apply as a risk management tool to markets. Okay, so uh, the key takeaway here is big sigma moves happen all the time, meaning, you know, at least once every 18 months, and you just have to be ready for them. We, we know the old saying that m markets take the stairs up and the elevator down. Well, uh, timing that is hard being short and buying puts, you know, that's a, you can knock your head against the wall waiting for that to happen and uh, run out of money. But having some cash ready when the market does get extended, and my key indicator again was the, uh, the triple Qs or the NASDAQ 100 getting 7% above its 50 day. And it finally um, uh, got so extreme, it got 8% above its 50 day, and we just needed a catalyst. And finally, coronavirus was the catalyst. And then what do you do when you get that big sigma waterfall cascade? You be ready to buy it. A, a 10 to 15% down move in one week uh, is buyable you know, at, some, at some level, in some stages, to some degree. And so if you're ready for it, um, you know, th those are the, uh, those are the uh, killer deals that you want to make in the market. All right, I think I, uh, I beat this dead horse enough. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments, uh, and if you want to see anything else about the VIX, uh, we can do it if you're on YouTube. Uh, there'll be an article version of this video on Zax.com, and I'll also have that link in, in the top comments on YouTube. All right, thanks for joining me in the kitchen.